All right, guys, so uh, we just had a fresh dump of snow, and I've had a lot of requests uh, if I could do a, a video on how I, how I do uh, my setting for coyotes, especially uh, in snow. So, uh, you know, you guys have seen me set, set a few sets, you know, just without snow on bare ground, but, uh, you know, this fresh dump of snow gives me a perfect opportunity to kind of, uh, you know, bring you guys along with how I go about setting it. Now, the equipment is a little bit different whenever I set in the snow, and uh, by that I mean, you know, around my area, a foot of snow is a lot. Um, you know, usually what we do is we get dumps of like four, six, eight, you know, inches of snow at a time. Uh, you know, no more than, you know, about 10 inches at a time. And, uh, you know, the snow, it lasts for a couple of weeks and then it's gone. You know, we just, we get some, some weird cycles around here with, with weather. So whenever I set in snow, um, I set and I find bare ground, knowing that uh, the snow's not going to hang around that long, you know. Um, around here, like I said, with four, six, even eight inches of snow, you know, it's fairly easy to find bare ground and uh, be able to set it. And, and the, the critters will work that bare ground, even with six, eight inches of snow around it, uh, if you do it right. And then as the snow melts, then you don't have to go through and redo all your sets, you know. Your set just is naturally there on bare ground. So there's a few things, uh, you know, that, that are a little different about setting in snow for me. Like I said, if you get a ton of snow, if you're getting feet of snow a year, this method is not going to work for you. But if you're getting, you know, anywhere under a foot of snow, th these methods will work perfect for you. But uh, anyway, we've still got our drill here, but we've traded in the big... Uh, three inch auger and we've now got a nine sixteenths wood auger bit on it um, this is gonna give you access to be able to drill holes in the ground and also pre-drill for your staking system so we got that there and uh, then a couple other things is this here is it's a homemade little deal uh, the, the blue thing is part of a plastic 55 gallon drum it's nothing more than like a big scraping tool uh, it's what I use to clean off my sets, you know, clean out around the set area, you know, and stuff like that. It, it, it comes out whenever we get snow. The other couple things are, uh, this is more or less a homemade snow shovel. Um, the way it's curved and the stiffness of it, it, it does real good for dragging the snow, which is primarily how I, uh, how I set in the snow. I'm, I'm trying to drag the snow away and find bare ground. This, this thing here just works better than a snow shovel for me. You can use a snow shovel. And then simply I have a just a little dollar store broom. And um, you'll see how all this stuff gets used whenever I make the set. But these are the few things that I break out once we actually do get snow and I'm setting in snow. Uh, like I said, maintaining traps in snow uh, is, is a little different. It's not that big of a deal. Like I said, whenever you're getting three, four inches of snow, it's easy just to pull the snow away. But this is going to be setting in the snow. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to show you primarily how I set. Whenever I set in the snow, I pretty much use one set and, uh, and go with it. I modify it just a little bit here and there, but it's primarily the same setup. So I'll get set up here and, uh, and show you what we got going. Okay, so uh, setting in snow, there's a few differences, but for the most part, um, you know, it, it's really about the same um, using coyote traps here now the first thing I do is I always whenever I make a set in the snow I always want to make the set in front of the snow I always like to keep this back part here undisturbed and a lot of times you'll see as the critter comes up you know because it's all opened up up front he, he doesn't have a tendency to work the back side you know and that, that's where a lot of misses actually occur is Especially with coyotes, you know, they'll come around the back. So we always want to be just, you know, head on facing the set. Now the ground is frozen here. Um, and it's froze down about six inches or so, you know, nothing super major. But, I mean, it's, it's still froze down enough where we can't get a dirt hole in. Um, so this is, this is where my drill comes in. Basically what I do is I don't scrape off any snow initially. I'll just take my, my little scraper here. And you can see, I mean, that's, that's hard frozen, frozen ground right there. I mean, that's, that's as hard as it gets. Um, we had a bunch of rain before this big freeze came, you know, so I mean, a lot of it's still 
water that hadn't ran off. But anyway, we're gonna make this set here. And the whole point with me setting in the snow is I wanna make as big a disturbance as possible. I wanna make a big eye appeal, big feature, you know, uh, that's what's gonna get them coyotes working. They're running anyway around here, you know. A, a coyote, he, he, he gotta really work in the cold, you know. He's not like a coon where he can den up. And, you know, I, I envy the guys that can trap in snow all year long because, uh, you know, just be able to see fresh sign and everything. I mean, you can see this set right here, those, those are coyote tracks right there. I'm, this is, whenever I say set on sign, this is what I mean. This is, that's fresh sign. That sign's less than 12 hours old. We had the snow last night and uh, there's a, it, it runs right into this trail. I'll, I'll video the, the area after I get done with this set. But you know, that's, it's that far away from where coyotes are running. And we have a prevailing, primarily a northwest wind here. And you know, this is, the wind's gonna blow right across there. He's gonna see it regardless. It's gonna be so big, he's gonna see it. But you still gotta work the wind. All right, um, in frozen ground, this is really where a good hammer comes into effect. Uh, I'll kind of go a little bit more into this hammer in another video, but you'll see what I'm saying. We're going to dig a trap bed in this frozen ground, no different than if we would in thawed ground. We're still going to try to get our bowl shape. It's just going to take a lot longer. And it's going to be a lot more time consuming. If you notice this shovel or this hammer is not throwing any dirt back at me, it's all going to the sides. Uh, this dirt being flung everywhere creates really, really good eye appeal. And like I said, this, there's, there is no easy way to trap in this frozen ground whenever you're playing in that rock solid ground. But you still gotta get your sets solid as you can and uh, you gotta have them. For me, where as the snow melts, you can, you can just have the set that's already there. If not, you spend so much time going back and remaking all the sets. So you can see I've chopped out this trap bed here and I've test fitted, I need to take out a little bit more here for the, the levers. And we'll do that just quick. And then just a little bit more right here. Now you can see, I mean, this is, it's gonna take you three times as long to put sets in the frozen ground as it will in the thawed ground. But whenever you understand the movements of coyotes, it's well worth it because you'll still catch, catch critters sometimes even more. Now the whole point of this slowly chiseling the ground out is we're gonna use wax dirt to bed this trap in and it's really hard to get your trap packed in. I mean, you can see, I'm just getting that trap basically to where it'll lay in there. Uh, you, can, you can dig a giant hole and just set it in there, but you gotta remember everything else is frozen. If that coyote feels that ground beneath him move, he's gone before he gets to your set. So you really gotta spend a lot of time making a, a proper bed. And you can see this bed here is just, it's just perfect. It's just the size of the trap. Uh, by the time we fill this in, he's basically gonna only have the kill area inside the trap that he has to step on loose ground. You know, everything else is rock hard. Okay, so we've got our bed dug here. And it's this big bowl shaped bed. Now we've got to stake our trap. We're trapping out here in the middle of a big giant field. You know, there's not a tree for, for good, good ways. We're gonna still have to use an anchor. Uh, I'm, I'm big on these earth anchors. I'm not big on a toggle, you know. 
you could tie a toggle, but he might be a quarter mile away. So we're gonna take our drill here. And we're gonna dig, drill two holes side by side. This is a 9 16 bit. And we're basically pre-drilling. Like I said, the ground's froze about that deep, so you just wanna get through that. I'm running 18 inches of chain, so I'm not worried about, you know, that little bit. Uh, we're pre-drilling for our super stake here. Once we get him in, then you're gonna really have to drive this thing in. Down through that frozen ground. And like I said, if you have frozen ground that's deeper than, you know, your anchor, uh, you're gonna have to toggle it or put it on a drag. But like with me right now, I've got 18 inches of chain. All I gotta do is get down below that frozen ground. Okay, so there it is. We got our anchor in. We're gonna still set our earth anchor. All right, now, freezing conditions. The trap is just set in there just about as good as we can. You can see it still wobbles a little bit. There's really not much you can do about it, guys. You're not gonna be able to get the, the bedding near as good with this frozen ground as you can, um, you know, like with thawed ground. It's just not gonna happen. That's why it comes back to having a proper size bed, the exact bed. That's about the only way you can get around it is you just give him where if he does step on, on loose ground, his foot's gonna still hit that pan. Um, there's no method I have found that, that, really, that really works, you know, in this truly, truly frozen ground. So we've got just a perfect size bed for this trap. And uh, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take wax dirt. Cause like I said, this set, this snow might not be here in a week. And so all this water is gonna run into this pool and then it's gonna probably freeze again, it's winter. So we wanna make it as weatherproof as possible. I got some wax dirt here. We're gonna put wax dirt in the bottom of the bed. Test fit again. Make sure that we still wanna be below ground level. Cause like I said, guys, we're thinking ahead to whenever the snow's gone. So you don't want your trap sticking way out of the ground whenever there's no snow here. So we test fit it. It's still, you know, a good half inch below ground. That's just fine. Um, you guys seen, I'm big on these pan plugs here. This is just half inch pipe insulation. Uh, I like it a lot better than polyfill. Not big on running screen. There we've got our truck. I mean, that thing is, you can see it, there's still a little movement in it, but it's not that bad. I mean, it's, but like I said, if a coyote, if he puts his foot right there, he's gonna get it, hit the pan. So you've done the best you can with this. Now simply, we're gonna cover her up with our wax dirt. Problem is with wax dirt, it's, it's, you can't pack it. But we're gonna pack it down as much as we can. It, you gotta do the best you can here. Put all our weight on the outside edges so the only loose spot is right there at that kill area. Okay, so we're a little, little below ground level. That's a, that's a bedded trap. That's as good as you're gonna get in this frozen ground. Um, it catches coyotes, guys. So, what we're gonna do now is, um, we're gonna take this drill here, and we're gonna put uh, two holes. Now we're gonna aim them right towards that pan. Uh, and whenever I say close to the pan, it's, you know, probably six inches away. Okay, so we got one hole there. We got one hole there. Gonna brush a little of that dirt away so we can plan as day see those holes. Now, contrary to popular uh, belief, I think a smell of bait, you know, has a lot more to do than a visual. You know, you, 
you dig a deep dirt hole and uh, you know that coyote don't see the bait he smells the bait you know look at his face he's he's oriented for smell uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my bait and it's a you know it's a meat based bait and I've got just a little quarter inch dowel rod and I'm gonna plug as much of that hole full of bait as I can you know I drilled that hole you can see six inches deep you know you can get quite a little bit of bait in there and that's gonna smell quite quite well um, I, I'm big on just baiting urine whenever you got good thawed ground uh, but you know later in the season like it is now uh, you know the coyotes are it's it's mating season you know they got things going on I will use a uh, you know a gland lure and that's what this other hole is for a gland lure so now we've got this set and you can see it is so out of place here there's nothing in the world gonna work that you know come step to that one pot of bare ground you know in all this snow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just a little snow in my shovel here and I'm gonna build it up just a little bit behind that set I've got good good clean white snow just there that snow being in those holes ain't gonna matter once you plug them full of bait and, and lure but uh, anyway right there in the dead center of that is where I'm gonna put my urine uh, if you've ever watched a dog the way he he takes a pee um, he'll come up to an area and he'll smell right where that urine is so what we want to give him the opportunity to do is hit this pan twice he's gonna we're gonna put our urine right there so ideally this coyote's gonna come he's gonna come right up here to smell that so we've got him where we, possibly we can get him by his front foot we've also got these other two smells really working uh, for us here so he might dig around and paw around we've got him by his front foot here next if you ever watch the way a dog urinates he'll come and smell then he'll turn sideways and hike a leg and he'll pee right on the same spot most of the time so you know you say your coyotes you know this tall off the ground you know you measure what the uh, leg spread you know it's about a foot so that's probably 10 inches or so and like I said this is all hypothetical but it, it does work uh, you've got a good opportunity here to if you miss him whenever he comes in with his front feet then whenever he hikes that leg or in a female's case that they squat to pee on that then you've got him by his by his back foot here and you know uh, if I catch a coyote and he's caught by any of his four feet that's good enough for me so anyway uh, finally what we're gonna do is we've got wax dirt on this spread or on this pan uh, it needs to have just a little coating I'll just take this shovel here and I'll just sprinkle just a little bit of, of snow on it We've got wax dirt, so after this thaws, it'll handle it just fine. Um, and then I'm going to take this camera back, and I'll show you how I rake out this area real big. All right, guys, so here's our finished set. Uh, I'm going to take my big shovel here, and I'm just going to drag all this stuff around. I'm going to make an area pretty big. Still trying to keep it in front of the trap. I want this coyote to feel comfortable coming into this area. Uh, I want him to be able to work this set and not feel skittish. You can see how much disturbance I've made here. I've kicked up a lot of snow. There's a lot of debris. The snow's dirty. And finally what I'll do is I'll just go through with this broom and I'll just kind of just mess the area up a little bit. Uh, once again, Right there's our set. Right there's urine. We've got bait plugged up in that hole, uh, lure in that hole, and there's the trap. But you can see this big area here that I've got opened up, and it's right on sign. So this coyote here, he can come into this area, and, and he's not skittish. If you try to block him off so much in the snow, you're not going to get them near as much as you're going to do it whenever you got this big area. So anyway, uh, like I said, setting in snow, it's a pain in the ass. It, go, it takes a lot more work than it does, uh, 
you know, setting in thawed ground, but your your results will be very productive if you get a good a good system down. Okay, so there's the uh, there's a look at the finished set. Um, after baiting up and and urine and lure, uh, like I said, you can see by just I just plugged that that hole full of bait, you know, because we can't have exposed bait. So so the way you just plug that bait down in that hole, that's still perfectly legal. It's out of sight. Um, and then you can see the way the urine's marked on there. It looks like a dog just just hiked his leg there and, and peed on that little patch of snow. Um, so it, it, it's an efficient way to, to set in the frozen ground. Um, and, and it works. So anyway, that's just a look at the finished set. Okay, guys. Uh, here's the finished set from a distance. You can see I've kind of brushed out uh, as much tracks as I can. Uh, there, there's a set of coyote tracks right there. He's just going into that. Uh, it's CRP is what it is, and behind me is about six to eight hundred acres of open field. Um, these coyotes are just coming along the field edges. But uh, anyway, that's a that's a set right there that you can see the amount of eye appeal it has in the snow. Um, and and like I said, after the set is uh, uh, melted, after the snow melts, you'll still have a, a, a good set. And you can even come into this set if you feel after the ground thaws and, and dig a dirt hole, you know, and have a dirt hole. Um, but anyway, you can see by the set here that I, there's no disturbance around the backside of that set. There's nothing. Uh, everything to be able to be worked has to come from the front. Uh, I always preach setting doubles, and there's another set right there. Uh, this set here, you can see, is just it's right on this field change. And it's where these coyotes are coming down. They run these field changes. But you can see once again how much area, you know, I've cleaned off with the snow. It's got huge eye appeal and everything else. So uh, these are good sets. They'll, like I said, they will work, uh, you know, if you're in areas like me, you know, that doesn't get a ton of snow. So I just wanted to show a, a set in the snow that, uh, you know, I utilize the snow and, and try to keep disturbance down. You know, because I've I've showed a, a set also, you know, that I, I create a lot of disturbance. But uh, this is nothing more than the edge of a field. You see my, it's on a, my UTV path. And the coyotes, they're naturally going to follow this trail too. And so this set here is a, it's a portable pocket combination walkthrough type set. You can see it's just right in the middle of the four-wheeler trail. And uh, all I've done is I've bedded the trap just right there right in the center and I've got a portable pocket uh, drove down in the frozen ground in that tuff of grass and then I have some urine right there and uh, this you can see I've kind of packed down the area around so it naturally looks uh, okay to walk through uh, put a little bit of snow over the set but uh, I'll give you just a, a view of the kind of a back view of the set nothing more than just a, a fairly blended in trail set but uh, this set here will take a lot of coyotes during the season and fox and you know anything that's going to follow a trail so anyway uh just a, another snow set that's use a lot utilizing the uh the snow you know minimal disturbance so anyway guys it's that set and we'll move on